Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. And tonight we're going to talk, well, we're going to talk about a couple of new knife drops. CRKT has an interesting new thing out in their uh, Forged by War line. Emerson Knives has a new signature Siri knife out called the CQC-17. Mark, good to have you here, sir. And uh, it is uh, 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 inspired by the straight razor. And I am down for anything. I mean, anything that's inspired by the straight razor. Big fan of that shape. Uh, so we're going to take a quick look at that. And uh, then we're going to start talk a little bit about the state of the collection, which oddly enough, considering this is no new knife November, I've had an influx of new knives. I think people are taking pity on me. And uh, so I've had a couple of care packages come in. Uh, to the Knife Junkie podcast, which I greatly appreciate. And um, hey, Caleb, how you doing, sir? Good to have you, as always. Jock from across the shock, good to have you here, sir. I see uh, you, oh, and Joe. Thursday, happy Thursday night knives to you. Both of you had dogs in your, in your, uh, in your little in your logo there, and I have a brand new dog, and he's, uh, I'm going to call him a hound, and he's laying next to me, sleeping faithfully. We called him Argo. Kind of after Argus, Odysseus's dog, who waited for him for 20 years, then wagged his tail once and died on a pile of dung when he saw him return in the costume, in the disguise that Athena dressed him in. Anyway, Argus, uh, the sign of loyalty. We've named him Argo. He's a little, uh, he's a little half German shepherd, half something else, and he's awesome. He's my little shadow. Plains Crafter, great to have you here, sir. Blade Ogre, awesome as always. Great to have you here. And Bad Monkey EDC, happy Thursday night knives to you, sir. Uh, so we're going to, yeah, we'll, we'll go through the G-Man. Great to have you. We're going to go through the state of the collection. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of new knives, well, four new knives in particular that I have. And one more, uh, okay, let's see the dog. Oh, shucks. Well, if I must, let's see if I can get him on camera there. Oh, yeah, there he is. What a cutie. What a cutie. You just got a view of my messy desk, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a little butterscotch stallion. I love that dog. I've only had him for less than a week, and man, I'm like I'm impressed. Uh, a, a dog's uh, immediate uh, love for you once you feed him a few times and give him a nice home. It's amazing. Classic myth and knives, great combo. Yes, sir. Yes, for the stout-hearted. Uh, Jock says, "Awesome house ain't a home without a dog." You know, uh, I've had uh, a cat for a long time. Well. Uh, not for very long, but she's awesome. Little hunter killer. She chased a fox out of our backyard. Love that. Love that. But uh, now I know I know what you're talking about. There is something about a dog. Uh, and uh, yeah. So agreeing with you here. So he's, he's laying next to me. He's going to get used to the sound of my voice just going on and on and on as you all have. And actually uh, funny as uh, we talk about it tonight, there's a knife called the Alpha Dog that we're going to take a look at uh, from Off Grid Knives, uh, which was sent to me by, by Carrie at Off Grid Knives. And I'm very grateful. What a cool knife. They're making some cool, cool stuff. Looks like, excuse me, looks like any knives guy desk. Yeah, seriously. Um, yeah, my daughter the other day, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I may have mentioned this. She's like, no, let's just count up how many knives you have right now. And there were 48 knives on my desk. And I didn't, it didn't even seem like there were, excuse me, it didn't seem like there were too many. But uh, anyway, I guess there were. Man's best friend, my pups are my life. Yeah, and you've got some beautiful pups there, man. Those uh, those uh, Siberian Huskies are amazing. Uh, and then we're going to camp out the night, uh, the night with a knife fight. This is going to be Case versus Rough Rider. And then I swear to God, I swear I'll let it dangle. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, every time I try and let it go, they keep pulling me back in. I had uh, six new Rough Riders come in recently uh, from, from a friend of the show. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to put this to bed once and for all, because recently I've been seeing some disparaging videos about case knives and their QC. So I, I, I want to, you know, if, if I'm not alone and I might be doing this knife fight on my own, uh, I'd be interested to see what the arguments are, because I haven't had a, a new case knife in a couple of years. So I haven't suffered any QC issues. Mm. Pause for some icy cold water. Uh, okay, so um, first order of business. Uh, I just want to mention that in two days, we have the Knife Junkie Town Hall. This is the fourth town hall 
November 14th, Saturday, uh, noon Eastern Standard Time. We start and we start off with a bang. Ernest Emerson will be our first guest uh, at uh, 12 noon. And uh, each guest will be on for about a half hour, maybe a give or take. Uh, probably not take, probably more like give because we all like to to talk once we get on the topic. And uh, uh, like I said, Ernest Emerson will be will be first up. And uh, uh, we also have uh, uh, Lance Abernathy uh, of Sniper Blade Works. We have Alec, Alex Steingraber. We have TJ Schwartz. We have uh, uh, Nick Timpson. And we have, uh, and that's it. That's it. Uh, actually, truth be told, I haven't gotten, I'm not exactly sure if we have Nick Timpson. I'll be I'll be honest with you. Uh, Birdvis knives, Nick. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk tomorrow. Hopefully, we have him. Uh, these town halls, and this is no uh, exception. It's an opportunity to get together with your favorite knife makers online, hang out with them for for a short per uh, period of time, kind of see where they work. Um, oh, awesome, Jock! I don't get fired over this, but uh, well, you know, maybe it's worth it. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, how's it going, Peter? Good to have you here, sir. Uh, so, uh, chance to come on, ask some questions of, of these people. You can actually lavender pants. Good to have you. I just so happen to have this close at hand. Don't want anything to happen tonight. So I have this here. Um, but it's a chance to come on, ask questions. You can either do it through the comments or you can actually go to the knife junkie.com slash join. And Jim will bring you in on your own little screen. You can ask, uh, the likes of Ernest Emerson or Alex Steingraber or Lance Abernathy or TJ Schwartz, uh, questions about their process, about their knives, what they're, you know, what they expect to be releasing in the coming year, this kind of thing. And, uh, I don't know, it's just a fun kind of thing. You know, um, I mentioned in the newsletter that, uh, we, that I occasionally write that Jim, uh, sends out about, um, how I like to throw parties. You know, my wife and I have always had fun hosting parties. And um, this is kind of like that, uh, but obviously it's virtual and it's all about knives. You know, the parties we throw here when we have them, we haven't had one in a while, obviously, but uh, when we have a party here at the house, there's not too much knife talk. Or if there is, it's when I corral some guys down to the bar in the basement near the man cave and we talk knives. I make them, you know, listen to me uh, while we drink or something like that. But uh uh, these town halls are the real deal. It's a it's a genuine hang with genuine knife folk, and uh, they're a lot of fun. So please join us November 14th. That's in two days uh, at uh, noon Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. And uh, and enjoy. Enjoy and ask questions and stuff. I have a question for Alex Steingraber. How often does he post knives for sale? I want one. Yeah, no kidding. So uh, last time Alex sent me an email and said, I'm going to be, uh, you know, I, I have some knives coming up on this date, and I spaced it. And he sent me something, which I saw later, and uh, so I missed it. Uh, but I will not miss the next one. Those sharks are really cool knives. Hey, James, how you doing, sir? Good to have a classy gentleman with us. Not that you're not all classy, uh, but for some reason, I'm, I'm kind of locked on to the fact that James Moore is a classy gent, and I'm not sure why. Maybe it's his awesome knife collection. Uh, in any case, or his Merkin Muffley uh, handle. That's you, right? Uh, anyway, so let's do a pocket check because I know you're all going to join us at the Knife Junkie Town Hall, November 14th at noon Eastern Standard Time. So uh, pocket check. Today, I had a, uh, well, I was at home today. I've been quarantining, actually, uh, the past, uh, well, it'll it'll be two weeks on, on Monday, because it seems one of us was exposed to someone who had, had the vid. So we're just, just laying low, and it's been fine. Uh, very, very thankful that uh, everyone's in great health. Uh, but uh, in that period of time, I've been carrying so many different knives all throughout the day. But today I locked in on one carry, partially because I knew this whole thing was going to come up right now and I was going to have to show you what I was carrying. But also I'm very excited about three new knives I got. Yes, three new knives and no new knife November. They were sent to me. I mean, I can't help that. And what am I going to do? Be rude and send them back? No, sir. So doing the right thing. I uh, I brought them into the fold, and uh, I'll be showing them off later, uh, all three of them, but I'll show you the one I was carrying today, and uh, this is the Off-Grid Knives Scorpion. This is a beautiful knife. Uh, 
I'm very surprised at how much I really, really dig this knife. And uh, the reason I say that is I could look at it and say, oh, yeah, I really like that knife because I very much like the design. That blade shape is awesome. To me, it's reminiscent of uh, um, or it has some of the qualities of the old Microtech LCC. It's got it's like a clip point, but also. I don't know, it's got a very aggressive aggressive sort of point. That long, beautiful swedge, the nice thumb ramp. Uh, I love the blade. It's S35VN, by the way. And uh, this this knife is made by Wee Knives. This is in the Elite line of off-grid knives. Actually, you can see that right there, Elite. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You're speaking with an Elite gentleman here. This frame is titanium, beautifully anodized black. It's got an awesome deep carry pocket clip, uh, and look, inlaid uh, um, carbon fiber, even on the lock side. Ain't that class, I love that. And then look at the shape of this handle. This handle is one of the most comfortable and most ergonomic uh, knife grips I've, I've really had in hand in a long time. I love it, it's so, um, well, you know, you hear about uh, the hand was built to hold a stick kind of thing. This this is like just the right kind of stick. It's It's got just enough, uh, of a, of a nod to the, the human hand anatomy without forcing your fingers into any position. And, uh, you know, it's comfortable in any old position. Not that you're going to take this out into the woods and do this kind of a thing, but, you know, you could really carry this in any position. It's a tactical knife, though. This is a three and three quarter inch blade. And uh, in reverse grip, it's fantastic. Uh, I, I really love this knife. We Knives made this, if I didn't mention that. We Knife knows how to make a knife, it turns out. Uh, deep carry pocket clip. The only thing I would change on this knife, actually, I've tried to look for things, but it would be those screws. I'd make them recessed flathead screws. But even this, at first I thought, oh, I don't like where the pocket clip and this uh, cutout are because in my experience, that will make the pocket material, especially the fatter material at the seam of the of the pocket catch in there with the pressure of the pocket clip, but the pocket clip is canted in such a way that it doesn't affect it. Um, so <laughs> all's well that ends well. What can I say? I love this knife. It's awesome. Off-grid knives. So I guess, well, I have an interview coming up with Carrie of off-grid knives, but they have three tiers and this is their elite tier and I dig it. Uh, can we proceed Mr. Emerson making a mini sax again? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Come on and tell him. Mm. Edwin keeps po excuse me. Edwin keeps posting videos of his mini sax, and man, that knife looks awesome. And I'm not much of a mini guy in terms of a. Uh, is there a giveaway? Um. Oh, uh, uh maybe on. Uh, are you talking about on the town hall? I haven't. Uh, I have two knives to give away here, and actually, I haven't planned the giveaway. Uh, yet. Uh, next week, we have uh, the giveaway for uh, the, the Patreon uh, $10 level gentleman junkies right here on Thursday Night Knives. But uh, no, sir, not tonight. We're not doing a giveaway, but uh, it'd be kind of cool, cool to do. Uh, oh, but it, there's no giveaway of these off-grid knives. No, no, that's not happening. Uh, in any case, that's what I was carrying. And then on uh, in my left pocket, I had uh, I had my nerdy little little thing to carry my my various pocket accoutrement, my my flashlight. No, it's not a torch. It's a flashlight. I got it at Home Depot, okay? Don't run me off the internet. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, of course. Uh, I have my little Kawiko spontaneous giveaway. Hey, um, how about this painting? No, I'm just kidding, never. Uh, Kawiko Lilliput, like a Lilliputian, like a little tiny little pen. And uh, it's this amazing little fountain pen. Love this thing. It's aluminum and super light. And these modern fountain pens, they don't... <laughs> nice torch. Uh, these modern fountain pens do not... That torch is like saying film instead of movie. Oh, this is not a movie. This is a film. It's the same thing. This is not a flashlight. This is a torch. Um, so this thing is awesome. Uh, these modern... Uh, uh, these modern fountain pens like like the Lamy uh, Safari. They just don't leak all over the place like the old ones did. And, uh, you know, uh, so I like these. I like them. I, I like them a lot. So uh, I also had the uh, cotton sampler 
from uh, Rough Rider with the totally, totally wonkily ground blade, but I still, I still like it. I like it for all its flaws, you know. It's like people you know. Uh, so yeah, cotton sampler. So let let me know what you were carrying today. I am interested, as always. Um, spontaneous giveaway. Mm. I think we'll do that next week. Sog Pentagon XR today. Oh, excellent. An excellent choice, sir. Uh, uh, that, that's a good knife. <laughs> Glad you like it. Uh, Para 3 lightweight with M390 and an S30V and an S30V and G10. Oh, oh uh, UKPK pen knife, uh, United Kingdom pen knife. Those things are really cool. I've never had one. But uh, they were the first modern slip joints, I think, that I became aware of. And uh, I think they kind of really started uh, a trend that they're not um, credited for. You know, all of these, uh, you know, all, like the uh, the Benchmade and all, all of these modern uh, uh, slip joints. Sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. Northern Skaha. Northern, okay, okay. So I, I want to talk to those guys. Um, I reached out to them and, uh, this was about a year ago and they're like, yeah, let's talk in a year and I have to get back to them. <clears throat> but they seem to be, uh, back in the, you know, at the drawing board. You haven't heard much uh, from them recently, but, uh, that Skaha and the Skaha too really made a, a, a splash. So I'm interested to see what they have coming next. Uh, Southern mini Tulk. Excellent. Excellent. So that, that is not, uh, if I'm correct, right, this is not the spider co. This is a Southern um, mid-tech. Is that right? Just a yes will do. I, I, don't, I don't mean to. I know we're not talking in real time. Olamic Whippersnapper. Nice, nice. I, I, <laughs> a super freak today, Jeffrey says. I have a weird thing with, with Olamic cutlery. Uh, I like some of their knives a whole lot. And then some of them, oh, some of them are ghastly. But some of them are gorgeous. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand my own reaction to their knives. Lone Wolf Harzy Tactical. Nice. Benchmade Ruckus and Rough Rider Micarta Folding Hunter. Love a folding hunter. Uh, but the Lone Wolf Harzy Tactical. Now, you look at Lone Wolf. Um, they were bought up by Benchmade, I think, in like, uh, like 2010 or 11 or something like that. And uh, they had a number of knives. I think two of their, of their flagship knives were designed by William Harzy. And, man, they just have that Harzy look. I don't care if it's a Gerber designed by Harzi or a Spartan or or a Lone Wolf, which is you know no longer. They just it is new knife November indeed. Uh, the just all of those Harzi designs, you can just spot them a mile away, but they're not derivative of one another. That's a true master, you know, someone who's got a style, a design style without everything looking exactly like the last thing. Rusty says, started the day with my Spyderco Manix 2XL and CPM M4, customized by Scott at Big Boar Knife and Gear. Nice. Para 3 and Maximet and GEC 97 Beaver Tail. Started the day like that. Did you have a wardrobe change, Rusty? Did, uh, are, are you carrying something else right now? Or... Oh, oh. Or is that did that carry all throughout the day? Mark Rough Rider Cotton Sampler in Black Smooth Bone. All right, Mark. I like I like hearing it. I like hearing it. This this is a, a shockingly useful knife, actually. And I find that that fat. It, to me, I, I look at this as a as a truncated spay blade, and basically, you know, you can use it for, you know, I don't know, all sorts of weird stuff. Anyway. Uh, Rough Rider Reserve Easy Open Razor, which I am dying to get, but I know that when December rolls around, I'm sure they'll be way sold out. Uh, but I love that. I love. I, I actually love where the Easy Open notch in the handle meets the Easy Open notch in the blade. There's like this weird little area where you know your your pants will. You know when you're pulling it out, your pants will get caught. It'll open right up. Beautiful. TRM Neutron. Everything everyone's saying, I want to grab my own. I don't have a Neutron, but I have an Atom. Love those TRM knives. Amazing. And now, now it's up to me to get some new scales. I've carried a Kershaw Link for about two years. I mean, who doesn't love the Link? Uh, tell me, is that the FRN version or the um, aluminum version? And uh, shockingly, I liked, I had both and I liked the FRN version better. Andrew, my local 
shop Rivers Edge Cutlery. Oh, yeah, that's right. Had 20 CV Kershaw links for 59 bucks last week. Jeez, man. Insanity with that price. Yeah, that's crazy. 20 CV. And um, what a beautiful design that is. That was the only thing ever holding back the link was the um, the uh, assisted open and the materials. They could have they could have dressed that thing up and sold it under the Kershaw shingle uh, with uh, dressed up materials and better action for you know you could you could sell a hundred dollar Kershaw I believe. Sorry, I keep hitting my table. Uh, also have my off grid Viper with me. Sweet, I, I'm digging these off grid knives, man. Um, I'll show you a couple of other choice samplings in a while. Timothy Becker, a three-day-old Microtech Stitch. Ah, oh, work of blades, man. Those those knives, everything he's ever touched that I've seen, beautiful. And the K390 Shark, that's, uh, of course, by Alex Steingraber. And as a matter of fact, uh, Timothy is the man who uh, who told me to reach out to Alex in the first place. So, Timothy, thank you. Hopefully, uh, uh, you're able to join us this Saturday for, for the town hall. That'll be awesome. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Happy Thursday Night Knives to you, sir. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Carrying the new Kaiser Big Lighter Tanto and Carbon Fiber. Handsome knife, Dave. I saw that the other day. Uh, I think it was your an Instagram posting. Uh, one of the few uh, carbon fiber knives, handled knives, where I saw it, and, you know, gave me gave me pause. And I really like how they redesigned the Big Lighter. Excuse me, and I love the Tanto. Just, just nice. Dave's been killing it like every day, putting out a new video, this old sword blade reviews, and uh, just putting up all like some very unique and uh, knives and like very much of the tactical ilk and of the unique and interesting designs in the modern knife uh, thing. So definitely check out Dave's channel. Uh, have you seen the new Real Steel Port uh, Poltergeist work slippy? Looks nice. Yes, I have. Anything de designed by Jacob, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name, of Poltergeist Works to me is really good looking. I mean, he's got a design style also that turns me on. And he, you can always tell one of the signatures of his style, uh, I think, is like he has these chain ring bolts at the at the at the pivot and at the at the tail of the knife. And they I don't know, something about it gives him a, a really bookended uh I don't know, just a beautiful design flourish. Really like them. Uh, picked up the EOS Thresher, uh, Thresher Dagger this week. It's sweet. Wait a sec. Is this the... Um, uh, okay, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, I, Thresher is what's what's throwing me off. There's a new dagger, uh, double... Ed, uh, uh, and who is it? It's um, something obscene company and someone else collaborated on this really cool double-edged folding dagger design. Is that what you're talking about? I can't remember what that's called. EOS Thresher. Okay. Uh, looking at Cold Steel XL Voyager Tanto model thoughts. Uh, please do. <laughs> uh, uh, well, yes. I mean, I would say definitely. Uh, I love the shape of the, um, of the, of the Voyager Tantos. Uh, they're hollow ground, at least the, the ones I have. Hollow ground, uh, they have a just a slight upsweep, which I like in a Tanto. And, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with that Voyager handle. It's light. Uh, it's girthy enough to give you uh, a great grip. And then it's versatile enough to give you a lot of different grips. You can choke way back and get the reach. You know all this stuff from seeing this. But the question might be, uh, should you get it serrated, unserrated, or half and half? And that is a question I, I cannot answer for you. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but if you're getting it, uh, you know, it's winter. If you're getting it because you're afraid you're going to get mugged and you want something that goes through a leather jacket, uh, get get the serrations. They're absolutely positively wicked. And, uh, you know, unless you're using it all the time every day, uh, they'll hold up a long time. And they're very sharp. Uh, and they're just nasty. Um but if you want ease of maintenance, you know, I would say, and, and just general overall pleasing to the eye and everything else, I would, I would get the, the plain edge, but really, you know, it is something to consider if you, if you are getting it because you think you're going to need it to save your life and uh, you live somewhere where it's cold, get the serrations. That's what I would say, but a, a great knife. You can't go wrong. Nick says, was thinking about getting the head, uh, 
Oh, HEA Designs Falcon. Do you own one? I do not. I don't own anything by them, uh, but the Falcon is really cool. I love that blade shape, and that's probably uh, probably what I would get. Um, and then second to that, because, I mean, to me right now, that's kind of the phase I'm in. Uh, unless it's a tactical knife that I really am, you know, moved by and I think I would carry frequently, I'm more into like well, like the Falcon slip joints and, and cool. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, that knife just is a turn on to me. Uh, but there's another one came out not too long ago. It's a flipper and it's got this crazy recurve tanto with a giant opening hole. And that thing is just amazing. Uh, I'm sorry. What was that last one from rusty packing up the house, getting fumigated and tented fucking termites now carrying my K bar dozer with thumb hole. Oh man. I am sorry. Rusty termites. Jeez, man. That's, that's the pits, man. Sorry to hear that. I have two knives due in next week. Well, but you got the Dozier. So uh, Jock says, I have two new knives due in next week. UTX-70 and a paramilitary two in M390. UTX-70, how cute. Wait, I have just so happened to have my, my Ultra Tech on me today. And, uh, oh, that's right. Well, this was uh, also something I, I was carrying. But uh, I'm just smitten with this knife. I think we should all carry daggery things if we can. Uh, so the UTX-70, I'm just curious, uh, uh, Jock, what, what blade you're getting with that. And if you're restricted, I mean, where I am, I'm not supposed to have this. But they don't know I have it, man. Just kidding. They just don't care. I got a new Dark Timber. Oh, Peter Kohler is killing the game. I love the Dark Timber with that 1911 is sweet. And then there's one that's even smaller than that, Commander or something. I don't remember what it's called, but it's this fat little recurve bow. It's gorgeous. Hoping to get a custom Thorburn front flipper by year's end. Mm. Now, James, is this something, and this this will show my naivete, but is this something that you go straight to the maker Thornbur, Thornburn for, or is this something you're expecting or hoping to find on the secondary market? Hey, James, I didn't realize Andre Thornburn made a front flipper. What is the model? Interesting. So yeah, I'm curious. Is that something you're getting from him or is that something you're seeking out? Just hoping to find it. Uh, so next week, uh, before we go on to Life Knife News, I just want to mention next week is the Patreon giveaway. And frankly, I, I will be 100% honest. I don't know what it's going to be. I have a feeling I know the realm it's going to be in. Um, and I have a feeling you do too. It's just I haven't gotten it yet, but I'll get it by next Thursday. And uh, it will be sweet. So that is for uh, people who are patrons at the $10 a month. Uh, we call that the gentleman junkie level. But that is not restricted to gentlemen. That's just the, the knife style, gentleman knife. You know. Anyway, it's classy as hell. So let's go on to knife, life, knife, knife, life news. I can never get that right. And I wrote it myself. I don't know why that is. So CRKT, you know them, Columbia River Knife and Tool little company you may have heard of from the great northwest they came out with a new knife it's a it's a multi-tool and it's in their forged by war um series and the forged by war series is a uh, a series of knives that that they um started making uh it was inspired by or started by ryan johnson of rmj tactical uh who came onto the scene of well, probably about 10 years ago now with the most amazingly beautiful uh, battle axes. I mean, let's call it, that's what they are. They were for breaching and, and he was making them for soldiers originally. And then if, the, if there was any leftover, the uh, civilians could get them, but battle axes, war hammers, but I mean, not, not, not your, uh, not your recreation war hammers, but stuff, stuff to actually use in combat. And then uh, he's uh, last three or four years, he's been making knives and such. And anyway, he started this uh, forged by war program where uh, veterans coming back from war could um, submit their knife designs to CRKT and have them made uh, through the company and, and proceeds, uh, some of the proceeds of the sale of the knife go back into uh, uh, veterans causes. So they have a new one called the Septimo, and uh, it's a pretty interesting. Um, it's a it's the Septimo multi tool, and it's a it's a basically a multi tool version of the Septimo that came out 
uh, designed by Jeremy Valdez. It was a folder, the Tanto folder, a couple of years back. And uh, this thing is pretty cool for a uh, for a multi tool. I mean, look at it. It's got a it's got uh, a, like a monkey wrench at the back, you know, with the with the uh, the wrench with the um, threading. God, what is that? Is that a monkey wrench? And uh, it's got that beautiful, almost three inch Tanto blade with a single VEF serration there uh, for, yeah, single VEF uh, for like cutting through string or what have you. Uh, it's got that uh, quite nice cap lifter on the top. It's got a couple of screwdrivers and, and such. But uh, what an interesting take on the multi-tool um, genre. Of course, it has a bottle opener. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> it's funny because uh, I kind of feel like the bottle opener is almost the least necessary tool you'll find because you know you can you can open up a bottle with almost almost anything if you have a hand uh, or two and and you can use a lever. But it's always nice to have a, a dedicated tool, especially on a multi tool. Uh, so I don't know. Interested? What do you think of this? If I, I wouldn't carry it, uh, but only and I only say that because I'm not a multi tool carrier. I keep them in my bag or at my desk, but I don't carry multi-tools around. If you're a multi-tool user or carrier, is this something that um, you feel interests you? I mean, I got to say those, those, that monkey wrench or those, those pliers, uh, that wrench on the back is really cool. I mean, to me, that's uh, I've never seen that before. So that's a, it's a new and interesting take on the multi-tool. And then on the bottom of that uh, set of pliers, you can see I do collect multi-tools, says Nick Martino. Well, Nick, man, this would be a unique feature of your collection. I think there's a gaping hole now in your collection, uh, which needs to be filled with this Septimo multi-tool uh, multi by CRKT. And note, on the end of that uh, wrench there, there is a glass breaker, Nick. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I would get it if I were you. Not really, Bob. I'm <laughs> All right. He's loyal to Leatherman. And... Uh, well, that's what you tell us all, but you know, we know what happens late at night when you get on the internet, you start, you start getting those Gerber multi-tools and you have them sent to work. So no one knows uh, we know. So check out the CRKT. Uh, not into this one says Rusty. Huh. It is an interesting one. I got to say, I mean, like if you cover up the top part, it looks just like a knife and then you do that and Everything goes cattywampus, but I think it's interesting, and I'd like to get one in hand just to check it out. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, next up, and I'm very, very excited about this, Rough Rider Reserve for the Barback will open a bottle on one of two blades without even opening it. Oh, nice. I like it, the Barback. Yeah, those, those, uh, those new Reserve, I, I got to get my hands on. So uh, next up from Emerson Knives, a little a little known company you may have heard of, Emerson Knives. We talk about them a lot here. The new signature series, uh, CQC 17. That's right. Every year they come out with a C uh, signature series model. It's a unique design, something new that they haven't made before. And this year it is the straight razor inspired CQC 17. And I got to say, man, just look at that thing. So if you want to get a video, if you want to see a video of this already, our good friend Edwin, uh, you know him as Caloper or K-A-L-O-P-R uh, on Instagram or Calo Blades on YouTube. He already has a video up of this. And uh, this was just released, I think, on Monday. I mean... I guess he lives pretty close, <laughs> but in any case, uh, Edwin definitely has his finger on the pulse and he, uh, and he got one of these in hand and he does a great comparison video with the mini sax, which we were just talking about earlier, the mini, uh, a 100, the mini CQC seven and, uh, and the mini sheepdog. And it's a great video as usual. He's got, uh, I think at this point about a hundred, uh, videos of his Emerson collection. And it's great because he, he really has some esoteric stuff. And, uh, this is just, this is just another one. Now I really hope two things. This is a, a three and a quarter inch blade, which is diminutive, uh, for any knife, but for an Emerson, it's definitely in the mini ca category. So I hope they, they make a four or nearly four inch, uh, bladed version of this, um, because I really like it 
quite a bit. I, I like the blade shape. I like the wavelessness of it, which is rare in an Emerson, or at least in the ones that I have and uh, have collected. And uh, man, that blade shape is just so appealing. Plus, yeah, no wave, but you know, I can live without it. It's like, uh, um, like on the Elvia, there's no wave, which is weird because really, let's be honest, it, that one of all should probably have a wave. Uh, but uh, I really like the one from Ed Calderon. So that's what I'm talking about, uh, uh, the Elvia. That one should have a wave. This one, to me, maybe not so much. Um, but I like that it's pointy enough to thrust and to you know penetrate. Say you're you're trying to open up a really st stubborn clamshell package. This would be fantastic. And that's one thing that Emerson Knives and also Edwin in his video are stressing. Like this thing, yeah, it looks nasty. It looks kind of like a menacing straight razory kind of knife. But what a spectacular EDC it is. That has been the uh, that has been the the theme going around about this knife. That yeah, it has a really cool look, inspired by something uh, that is a little menacing. But it is an outstanding like all day every day kind of just tasky knife. And uh, it's kind of funny they do say on the website though it is extremely razor sharp. Do not use it as a straight razor. Yeah, well I guess you got to tell people that because you never know who you're selling your stuff to. It's like uh, it's like these little. Uh, desiccation or anti-desiccant packs that say don't feed to children. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not in the habit of feeding desiccants to my children, especially not from knife packages. Uh, but uh, thank you in any case. Planes Crafter, holy mackerel, sir. Thank you. Greatly appreciated, sir. Thank you so much for that super chat. Wow. That's very generous and greatly appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, and nothing like a super chat to put a to put a halt in my prevaricating. Can't wait for the town hall. I'm literally excited. That's awesome. I, I can't wait too. It's going to be really cool. Uh, when is the town hall again? It's this Saturday, sir. This coming Saturday at 12 Eastern, um, 12 noon Eastern Saturday. And uh, Ernest Emerson will be our first guest. Uh, so right about at noon, he'll be starting. Uh, well, since it's be nice to Emerson Snow. <laughs> oh, Dave. Dave, someday, someday Dave will be obsessing over Emerson's and buying them all. Everybody hit the like button. Stop procrastinating. Agreed. You stop procrastinating. Don't, don't take my example. <sighs> I'm a terrible procrastinator. It's an awful, awful thing. And, uh, you know, I, I guess maybe guilt and children have, have taken some of that, but, uh, you know, if it's in you, it's in you. You you gotta you gotta exorcise it every day. Uh, anyway, so let's get on to this little thing I call state of the collection. Now I've been going on and on about how. It, so this is this is the materialists' uh, virtue signaling. This no new knife November I've been doing. I'm just like showing you all how incredibly good I am because I've noticed how incredibly bad I've been. So. I'm just going to make you all feel bad. But really, I mean, maybe I knew somewhere deep inside that people would take mercy on me and would send me knives during this period. Or maybe, um, you know, maybe it was hope against hope. But uh, I have received some outstanding um, and very generous gifts from from people, uh, fans, uh, viewers, I should say fans, viewers, and listeners over the past couple of weeks. I got, last week I, I told you about that haul of, uh, but seriously though, Bob, thank you for all the content. I really enjoy. Oh, my pleasure. It is truly my pleasure. And then when you hear people who actually, who dig it, and I, I know there, we have some fans, it really makes it very exciting. And, uh, yeah. Thank you, Nick. It's a pleasure to have you along. So yes, uh, received a lot of things, and <laughs> uh, let me let me get to the first one. So our good friend Rob Penna, over in New Jersey at Snaggletooth Tactical LLC. Now these are the guys who brought you. I'll bring it in from this side, the Snaggletooth MF. Now that is a an aftermarket um, modification or add-on, I should say that you can put on your removable thumb stud knife. It started with cold steel large models, 
and now he's uh, and now they have gone to a uh, couple of sizes and uh, you use it as a as an add-on wave you know uh, like a wave opener or a, a, an automatic pocket deployer we'll call it love this product okay so we've talked about this product we've had uh, Rob on the show a number of times and uh, he reached out to me and said hey we have one for the bug out now which is smaller would you like one I said yes I'd love one I'd love to check it out on my bug out because I carry it in the waistband quite often this is a great in the waistband carry because it's very thin you forget it's there and then if you need a knife an extra knife during the day or whatever there it is but to have it with the with the automatic opening automatic is not the right word um but the uh immediate opening of this kind of pocket opener i'm resisting the w word if you haven't gotten it but this ability to open it up automatically or simultaneously to drawing it uh when it's in the waistband is great however it's hard to access you got this deep carry pocket clip and uh and the like so hmm mouth is just drying out tonight sorry so uh rob and the good people over there at uh snaggle tooth tactical have created this hey alex good to have you here sir always a pleasure hey nick great to have you been digging those clip point videos recently um so this is a a, a deployment ring this is uh kind of like having a fob or a a, a lanyard on your knife it makes it easy to to grab and they have this uh for not only the bug out but also for the um the rat model too and really especially for in the waistband but also in the pocket it doesn't it doesn't stand up proud like a karambit ring it doesn't call out attention to itself it just sort of sits there and uh when you need your knife you just kind of pull it and if you also have the the uh, Snaggletooth MF, it just opens up and boom, you got it in your hand. It's a really interesting, cool product. And it's one of those innovations. How does it attach? It's one of those innovations that just, it, it can make your life easier and your, and your knife life more fun. So you see this, uh, this piece of aluminum is milled out to fit exactly over the, um, the spacer, the back spacer here, or the um, standoff. So it's right on the standoff and it's perfectly like the, the diameter is perfect. You feel no play in that. And it's very pleasing the way it kind of moves. But anyway, a uh, very interesting product. This is a split ring and it comes in black or silver. And uh, so I just got this today. I really look forward to checking it out. I'll do a video on it and, and uh, give my impressions. Uh, so far, I really like it. One thing that if you have any karambit training with this, you do must avoid doing a lot of karambity stuff, manipulations, flipping, and that kind of stuff. It's not meant for that because it is, it, it does move on a number of different axes. You know, it's not just this, but it's also this. And a regular karambit doesn't do that. And most karambit techniques rely on the fact that it doesn't do this. So, um, I wouldn't call this a karambit attachment, uh, whereas their other their other one that goes on the on the uh, cold steels and is rigid uh, is a little bit more like that. So anyway, uh, Snaggletooth Tactical, I love the the stuff they do, and I like all of these companies that are enhancing knives after the fact, whether it's with uh, nice uh, you know aftermarket scales or these kind of products or whatever it is, just taking our hobby and you know accentuate not accentuate it just like adding to it and making it better love that mm. love the lights by the way in the background thank you they're all they're all jacked up uh, it looks yeah i gotta fix them <laughs> gotta fix them but they're festive you know it's kind of like uh yeah warm festive lighting all right so we're talking about the generosity of friends and viewers and this pretty much uh pretty much takes the cake. I've been talking about how uh, I missed out on the beer and sausage. I was so excited about the GEC beer and sausage and then missed each drop, you know, because if you're not there the second they drop hitting the refresh uh, fresh button, you're, you're paying 285 bucks on the secondary market. Well, good friend, Mike Latham from uh, collector knives.net who uh, 
you may have just recently seen on the podcast. Such a such a great guy, such a laid back. Well, laid back. Maybe that's maybe that's not the right term. Yeah, he seems cool and unflappable, but you don't start a really awesome business that focuses on customer service and on top quality products by being totally laid back. So he's got a great demeanor and he was a pleasure to hang out with. Uh, but but to say laid back, I think, is to simplify things. Anyway, I don't need to go down that road. Great guy, Mike Latham. He's like, hey, Bob, heard you talking about the beer and sausage. I have a store model that is um, a model of the knife sent to us by the company that's marked S which stands for store. Would you like it? And I said, oh my dear Lord, yes. And he said, okay, I'm going to send it to you and you're going to send me a check for the paltry amount he's asking for it. And I won't, I won't uh, cash it till December 1st. So, uh, you know, so no one's integrity is compromised. I'm like, ah, beautiful. So here it is. What a gosh, what a gorgeous knife. This makes me, I mean, I've, I've wanted the, uh, this is the number 35 frame. And the last time they did this was a couple of years ago. Hey, what's up, Lindy Lou? Good to have you. Uh, a couple of years back, they did this. Uh, what is I said 35, right? The 35 pattern as the Churchill, which was a um, sheep's foot on this side and, uh, and a um, clip point on this side. But that same cigar uh, equal ended frame. And I missed out on that, like a Mama Luke. I really, really, really wish I had one of those. But I love this frame. And so here I have this one. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So you've got the you've got a beautiful um spear point with that machine ground swedge in the long pull, which is indicative of uh their titty ute stuff, like their higher end stuff has this kind of uh blade, you know, instead of a nail neck, it's got that long pull. And then the swedge is that kind of, they call it machine ground. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but uh, it's got the fork and cap lifter. Thank you, Blade Ogre. I, you know, I've been lusting after this for a while. It's for when I go to hipster beer garden parties in Brooklyn. This is what I'll carry. I'll be like, mm. uh, Enjoy the interview with him. Thank you, Rusty. And then when I when I get too much uh, uh, sourdough bread in my in my beard, I can just pick it out with this. I love this thing. Thank you, Mike. So greatly appreciated. Uh, you you really, um, <laughs> thank you. You hooked me up. I really thought I missed out on this knife. And uh, I know damn sure I was never going to pay 300 bucks for this on the secondary market. So thank you so much. Uh, so here's a funny little thing. I don't know if you have a beard and you like combing it. I love combing my beard just because it feels good. It's like a chance to get to that skin. That And uh, this one is sharp, dude. That is a sharp those tines are sharp so you can't dig in you got to be gentle it, it is really for getting rid of refuse crumbs and what a classy looking guy you'll be at the restaurant combing the, the crumbs out of your beard mmm <laughs> flavor saver all right so yeah very grateful thank you mike look at that beautiful natural canvas micarta Yes, sir. Collectorknives.net. Check them out. Okay. Now, lastly, for the state of the collection, um, I got some knives from Off Grid, an awesome tool for a phenomenal beard. Thank you, sir. Now, I tell this story often, but a few years back, um, maybe four or five years back, my father, my mom, and dad came to visit during the winter, during the holidays, that's only that's the only time I have this. And my dad looked at me and the gray was coming in. He said, you know, you're an old man when your youngest son is a gray beard. I know I told that story all the time, but I love it. I was like, I am not a gray beard. I'm not defined by this. And by the way, this comes from you. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, sir, for the compliment. So three new knives from Off Grid Knives. Now, We've gone from a company that I was curious about. Who's off-grid? What are all these cool designs I keep seeing popping up on social media? So I reached out to them, and uh, I had Kerry uh, from, from – uh, his name is Orefice. 
uh, it's an Italian name. Uh, I had Carrie on the show. We talked about off grid knives and very interesting guy with an interesting story and an interesting, um, interesting is not the word inspirational kind of uh, angle, kind of like, uh, kind of like your David cams and, and, uh, and, uh, um, your Asher knives and, and just, uh, and Nick, all these, all these people I've been talking to who have taken, uh, taken hold of their dreams and, and gone with it, you know? Uh, and a lot of the times that means having it be a side hustle to a regular job. And then eventually, um, you become defined by that work that you're doing, not the job job, but the, but that other job. And, uh, so, uh, after talking, I, I had, uh, so our good friend, Dave, uh, of, uh, this old sword, uh, blade reviews sent the channel. This, this is an off grid knife. Sea dog version two glass breaker, sweet blade. Um, he sent this, uh, we're going to auction this off. And, uh, this got me very interested in the brand and Carrie sent me three knives and a hat. <laughs> and a t-shirt. Very cool. I'm, I'm actually quite grateful. It was a generous care package. Uh, the first one, uh, this knife is so cool. It's called the uh, Black Stallion. Now, the Black Stallion was a movie from when I was uh, probably 10 in like early 80s. Um, so when I hear Black Stallion, immediately I think of that. But it is this beautiful milled on both sides G10 folder with this incredible three and a half inch Warncliffe blade. Now it's hard for you to, it might be hard for you to gauge here, but here I'll hold it up next to a, a bug out. Look at how, look at how big this sucker is. Look at how like a uh, broad that is. It's, it's sort of reminiscent of a, of a, of a ZT 300 series knife or something, but look at how broad that blade is. And it is th about the same width as this bug out, maybe a titch wider. And that's being scientific. But look at how broad it is. This is such a thin slicey knife. It, it, it really, things yawn open before you even bring that edge close. That's not true, but it, it seems like it is. And it's in D2, yeah, <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, now that you said it, it's bound to happen. It's D2 G10 steel frame. Um, Really, really uh, nice uh, deep carry three screw pocket clip. This thing is really awesome and carries very nicely. Great knife. Uh, number two, which I already showed, technically a sheep's foot, not a warning. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Yeah, 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 right. A warning would have a, a sharp descent, not a gradual, you know, it'd be a, it'd be a straight line there. Yeah, so that is a sheep's foot, but that's a an aggressive and pointy sheep's foot. Um, most sheep foots, sheep feet, I think of coming straight down, almost straight down. Um, so yes, thank you, Dave. Uh, number two, boom. This is the scorpion, and like I said, uh, to me, reminiscent of the of the LC LCC way back in the early two thousands. This blade uh, tip, I love this. I carried this uh, all day today, and man, you know, uh, titanium frame lock flippers have not really been my jam recently, but this has reawakened the love. Really, really impressed with this knife. Um, that's in the Elite Series. And then this thing, oh my God, this thing. This is called the Alpha Dog, and I think it's their one and only fixed blade. I could be wrong about that. But first of all, beautiful sheath. I love this little thumb push off thing. But take a look at this knife. Oh my gosh. Again, we have, you know, it's a pretty thick blade stock at, at a quarter inch or nearly a quarter inch. But it's so broad here to here and the grind is so high that it's very thin behind the edge. And this knife is just insanely sharp. And then to boot, it's quite heavy. This thing is uh, a, a beast. Uh, it's a, quite a heavy knife. I don't think there's any um, relief, uh, weight relief under this handle. And uh, it makes a small knife. What is this? This is 
almost five inches, I think. What is this? Four and four and three quarters. They have a few. Oh, a few fixed blades. Okay. I, I take that back then. So this is a four and three quarters inch blade, but oh my goodness, it's it really feels like like you could get performance out of it from something much larger. And uh, to be honest, this reminds me of the uh, Cold Steel Raja 3, the smallest of the Raja folders. Kind of has that uh, that vibe to it. My kind of fixed blade. Yeah, I mean, this is a do anything, do everything fixed blade. And uh, I mean, not for nothing. I know it's not designed for this, but imagine that being pushed into some soft material. I think of how, how large it would, what a big impression that would make. So yeah, this thing is incredible. And this is uh, in K110, Bowler K110. Does any know, does anyone know anything about Kaler, uh, Bowler K110? Is this, well, I'll do, I'll do the research, but I think this might be a, a special steel. I think this is one that uh, people have been ooing and eyeing about. So I'm going to have to check this out. But fancy name for D2. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm ooing and eyeing. Oh, oh, that's D2. That's German D2, which would be uh, D2, D2, powdered D2. Gotcha. All right. Well, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is, this is a brute. And an interesting blade shape also. So it's been a very, very lucrative No New Knife November for me. And it's it's almost making me feel guilty. Almost. But uh, in reality, not really. It's, it's keeping the engines going, keeping everything humming along. Um, thank you to everybody who... who who, who helped that happen. It's greatly appreciated. Well, uh, tonight it looks like uh, we're about to wind down. K110 is Swedish D2. Check out an app called Knife Steals. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were talking about that on your last, one of your recent videos. Swedish D2. Okay. Well, uh, we were going to do a case versus rough rider knife fight. And, uh, well, I don't think that's going to happen tonight. Uh, but... Maybe we'll try for it next week. I'm interested to see if anyone who's had a new case or a case from the last five years or so has had gapping issues on the bottom. Because to me, when I think of case knives, uh, any sort of frustration over blade sharpening or steel or, uh, you know, sometimes their clip point blades are blunt at the front, kind of rounded. Yeah, any of those kind of frustrations are usually waylaid by how beautiful how beautifully they dye their bones and jig their bones. I know my brother's going to be like, oh, you talking about dyeing bones and jigging bones? But I got this, Vic. Uh, the way they handle their scale materials is beautiful, their cover materials. And uh, the fit and finish down on the bottom with all the springs, in my experience, has always been so good and so smooth. It's always looked like almost one piece of material down there. And uh, I understand that's where they're having the issues lately is with gapping. And to me, that's it's a sad state of affairs because, well, because there's not much, uh, and that's why we were going to have a knife fight about this. There's not much that differentiates case knives from Rough Rider in terms of quality. I got to be honest, like um, the fact that they're American made in, in Bradford, Pennsylvania, to me is a, uh, great part of it that's that is one reason to buy a case and to spend all the extra money uh but you know you, you do have to keep pace with the people who are making 15 dollars knives without gaps that being said you know you get a rough rider you don't know what you're gonna get with case it used to be you had a pretty good idea three in the last year sent back kept one but has gapping almost steered me away from traditional knives well well, Rusty, you know, you could get older traditional knives. Oh, Rough Rider brought me back. You get older traditional knives. I've been I've been lurking around on eBay. There's so much cool stuff. And if you're into, into traditional knives and want super high quality, maybe don't want to spend that much, check out the Remington knives from the 90s and 80s. And, and, and I'm sure earlier, but that's what I've been seeing. And that those are in the kind of 60 to 80 to maybe a hundred dollar range at most, but some really, really beautiful uh, Remington knives. Um, 
old slip jointy things on uh, on eBay. My recent Cloverbone case swayback is fine. Well, they spend a lot of extra attention on the swaybacks and on the Tony Bowes designs. I think, I think I might be, uh, might be mistaken about that, but the swaybacks I've never heard complaints about because that's kind of more of a special knife in their, in their lineup, I think. Um, that and uh, a couple of others that go for a lot more. Rough Rider Reserve and GEC are incredible. Agreed. GEC, still my favorite. Still my favorite. Even though, even though, like, this is the, the Rough Riders are like the good time girl. It's like, a, well, it's like Rough Rider to bed, GEC to wed, as they say. As they say. In any case, I think that brings us to a close of Thursday Night Knives on this beautiful November Thursday. And uh, don't forget, next week, uh, which is the 19th, we will have uh, uh, the Patreon giveaway right here uh, on Thursday Night Knives. And uh, as Jim just had up uh, on Saturday, November 14th, noon Eastern Standard Time, that's this Saturday, we will have our town hall, our fourth town hall. And uh, we'll, we will have the likes of Ernest Emerson, Alex Steingraber, Lance Abernathy, and uh, 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 TJ Schwartz and Nick Timpson. <laughs> three things. I can hold three things in this brain at once. It's like, got to get hot dogs, sour cream, and apple juice. And if I repeat those things over and over, um, you know, it's all good. Oh. Thank you for mentioning that, Nick. Uh, a happy Veterans Day to all of you out there listening. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't mention it before now, and I'm sorry it took Nick to remind me, but uh, thank you to all of you out there who have stood between uh, me and my family and uh, my country and those who would do us harm. Uh, I, I am forever grateful, and um, you know, I, I, I think it's incredibly courageous uh, when people voluntarily throw themselves in that position, I never did, and uh, I have great uh, admiration and awe for people who who do. Great show, Bob and Jim. Thank you, Rusty. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for always showing up. Well, uh, Christine, great to see you. Thanks, Bob. Have a great Friday. You too, G Man. Thank you, sir. Great to have you around, Caleb. As always, have a great night. Great to have you around, and glad to see you were carrying the Pentagon today. Peter, great show, Bob. Thank you always for letting us play in your house. It's always my pleasure. I would love to have you to my real house and to my basement bar. But uh, until that can happen, uh, we're going to have to settle for a Thursday night knives. So for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying thank you so much for listening, watching, uh, and, uh, well, don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>